Welcome back, fellow Linux users. Today I'll be talking about backup software and how to take complete and comprehensive backups on Linux. I'll be showing how to use two different applications. The first is called TimeShift, which is meant for taking snapshots of your system files. And the second one is called Back in Time, and this one is used for backing up your home directory and personal files. If you do important work on your computer and want to be as safe as possible, then it turns out you should be utilizing multiple backup applications since different apps are meant for different things. So I think it would be best to start off by explaining my personal backup strategy and why I suggest you do something similar. But of course, what works for me might not work for everyone, and at the end of the day, the strategy you decide to do will depend on your specific needs. Also, there are quite a few good alternatives to the applications I'll be talking about today, and most if not all distros come with some sort of backup software already pre-installed, which might be completely fine for some people, but might be lacking for others. So feel free to explore some of the alternatives and pick what works best for you. But again, I think my recommendations today should work well for most people. But before we begin, I wanted to quickly mention that if you appreciate these sort of videos, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. This is the easiest way to help the channel grow, so thanks in advance. Alright, so in a nutshell, I suggest utilizing three different pieces of software for backups. Two of them I'll be talking about today, and the third one is called RescueZilla. And I've previously made a video about this one already. So if you haven't seen that, then I highly suggest watching it in addition to this video. RescueZilla is useful for creating full backup images of a drive and for cloning a drive to a new one. So for example, if you decide you want to upgrade your main system drive to a larger or faster SSD, then you can use RescueZilla to clone your entire drive along with the bootloader over to a new drive. The other thing RescueZilla can do is create a backup image which is useful if that drive ever dies on you, which can be pretty catastrophic if it happens to be your main system drive. But if you have a backup image saved, then you can simply just buy a new drive, restore that image to the new drive, and you'll be back up and running again, and your system will be exactly how it was when you took that backup image, which can be a real lifesaver. The only real drawback to doing these type of backups is that you can't set it on an automated schedule. The only way to run RescueZilla is through a bootable USB or disk, which means you'll manually need to do it yourself. Personally, I run RescueZilla on my daily driver about once every 3 or 4 months, and I store these backups on my network attached storage. The chances of the system drive failing is pretty slim, but it's nice to have a backup just in case. Even if the backup is several months old, it's still better than not having one at all. Now the next backup application I use is TimeShift, and I'll be showing how to use it in a minute. But what this does is it takes a scheduled snapshot of your system files which is useful in case your system or one of your important applications gets a bad update that breaks it. Stuff like this is rare, but let's say for example you run a system update and it upgrades your kernel to the latest one. But it just so happens that this latest kernel doesn't like your motherboard and its network adapter for some reason, and your system loses network access. Again, this stuff is rare, but it can happen. Well, thanks to TimeShift, all you would need to do is restore your system to a previous snapshot, and your system will be reverted to how it was before that bad update. All your personal files in your home folder will be left untouched since TimeShift is meant to only restore the core system files and applications. Personally, I have TimeShift set to automatically run once every week. And finally, the third application I suggest is called Back in Time. And this one is similar to TimeShift, but instead of backing up your system files, Back in Time is meant to do scheduled backups on your personal files which includes things such as your home folder, media, and projects that you're currently working on. Personally, I have back in time set to run on a daily schedule. This is the second application I'll be showing today. 
but let's first start off with Time Shift. Alright, so the first thing we'll need to do is install Time Shift, but depending on which distro you're using, you might already have it pre installed. For example, Time Shift comes preloaded on Linux Mint and a few other distros. But if it's not pre-installed, then all you need to do is install the TimeShift package using your distro's package manager. So since I'm using an Ubuntu-based distro, I'll first enter sudo apt update and then sudo apt install TimeShift. Now that it's done installing, let's open it up. And you'll probably need to enter your password. Now the first thing we'll need to do is configure it. If you installed your system using the ButterFS file system, then you'll want to use that option here. But for most people, your system probably uses the ext4 format, in which case you'll need to select rsync. Push next to continue and it will begin scanning your drives. Now you can select the destination drive where you want your snapshots to be saved. But there are some limitations. As you can see, Windows formatted drives are not supported. And the same goes for remote and network locations. You'll need to select a local drive. And generally speaking, it's best to select a secondary drive rather than the main system drive. So I'll go ahead and select this drive here and click next to continue. Now you can select your desired schedule for taking new snapshots. You can select monthly, weekly, daily, hourly, or on every boot. And you can select more than one if you'd like. You can also select how many snapshots of that time period you want to keep saved. Personally, I feel that weekly is a good choice here since I usually update my system about once every week or two. The default setting is 3 for this one, which means it'll keep the three most current snapshots and automatically delete older ones. Now you'll be given the option to include your home and root directories, but by default they're not included. I suggest sticking to the default options here, and the reason is because the next step I'll be showing is better suited for the home directory and personal files. Also, if you ever need to use TimeShift to restore a snapshot, chances are you only want it to restore the system files, not your home directory. If you do include your home directory and do a restore, then you'll lose all your files that were created after that snapshot. So it's best to keep your home directory excluded. Click next to continue and then click finish. Now you'll be taken to the main screen. Push create to start the backup, which will create your first snapshot. Once that's done, you'll see that snapshot listed here and all the following snapshots will also be listed here as well. If you ever need to restore one of them, simply select the snapshot you want and click restore at the top here. Also, if you ever feel like you have too many snapshots and need to free up some space, then you can delete snapshots here as well. And if you decide to change any of the settings we just went through, you can modify them by clicking the settings button here, or you can run through the setup wizard again by clicking on wizard. So that covers pretty much everything you need to know about time shift. So let's move on to back in time. But first I wanted to quickly mention two popular alternatives to back in time, which are Pika Backup and Deja Dupe. And these are both excellent choices as well. But personally, I've spent more time using back in time and I've never had any issues with it. So that's why I'll be focusing on that one. All these applications do more or less the same thing, but some people might prefer one interface over another, so feel free to try the others if you'd like. Now the first thing we'll need to do is install back in time. If you're using an Arch or Fedora based distro, then you'll simply install the back in time package. But for Ubuntu based distros, then you'll actually need to install the backintime-qt package instead. After installing it, search for it in the start menu. But you'll notice there's two versions, one with root and one without root. Generally speaking, you'll want to use the non-root version. Using the root version is meant for system files, but we already have TimeShift to handle those things, and TimeShift does that better. So again, go with the non-root version here. 
Now you'll be asked if you have a previous configuration that you want to load. In most cases, you'll want to select no unless you've previously used it and want to load a configuration. Now you'll be taken to the configuration page for your main profile. Let's first click on mode. If you're saving to a disk that's mounted to your system, then you'll want to go with local. If you want to back up to a remote or network location, then you can easily do that by selecting SSH. You also have the option of using encryption for better security. Now click this folder here to select the destination where your backups will be saved. But something to keep in mind when using a USB drive is that by default, when you plug it into the system, it will attach to the run folder instead of mounting it like an internal drive inside the MNT folder. From my experience, back in time won't be able to use USB devices that aren't mounted in the MNT folder. So if you're planning to use a USB drive, then I recommend using your distro's disk utility app and make sure you're mounting your USB drive instead of letting it automatically go to the run folder. But in this example, I'll be using a secondary internal drive that's already mounted. So I'll go ahead and browse to the MNT folder, select that drive, and select this test folder that I've already created. Next, let's select our desired schedule for taking backups. You have a wide range of options here, so select whatever works best for you. But personally, I think daily backups are a good choice here. If you select daily, then you'll be given the option to select what time of the day you want to run the backups. Now click the Include tab at the top. This is where you can add all the files and folders that will be included in the backup. I suggest adding your home directory and any other folders that contain your personal data. You can also add mounted drives here as well. Now let's go to the Exclude tab. Here's where you can add files and folders that are inside one of your included folders, but that you don't want to be included in the backup. By default, there are a number of hidden folders here, and in most cases you'll want to keep these. I'll also be adding my downloads folder, which is a part of the home directory, but I don't want downloads to be included in my backup. Now click on the Auto Remove tab. Here's where you can specify the details of how long you want to keep old backups. By default, any backup that's at least 10 years old will automatically be removed. And if the free space of your destination drive reaches 1 gigabyte, then it will automatically remove the oldest backup. I'm going to change this value to 20 gigabytes to give me a bit more headroom. Now the inodes option is related to how the system indexes files, and unless you know what you're doing, I just leave this on the default setting. Also, I highly suggest enabling the smart remove function so you can have more control over the number of old backups that are retained. This will help ensure that your backup drive never runs out of space. I think the default values are pretty good, so I'll leave it at that. Now if we click on the options tab, you'll find a few more settings which may or may not be useful for you. Normally, I leave all these on their default settings. And if you want even more options, you can check out the Expert Options tab. Again, I normally leave all these on their default settings. But if you want to find out more about a particular option, you can hover the mouse over that option to get a more detailed description of what it does. Now hit OK, and you'll be taken to the main screen. Click the disk icon at the top left to manually start a backup. Now that the backup is done, you can see the date and time for it is listed here under Snapshots. And if I click the disk icon again, you'll see that it took another backup. But of course you don't need to do this as the program will automatically follow your schedule in the background. And each new backup will show up here in the list. If you click one of these backups, you'll be given more detail on the right hand side of every folder and file that's included in the backup. If you ever want to restore something, all you need to do is select that folder you want to restore, right click it, and select restore. Also another nice feature about back in time is that you can set up multiple profiles, or in other words you can set up different backups. Click the manage profiles button at the top and you'll be taken back to this screen. 
Now click the Add button to add a new profile and name it whatever you'd like. Now you can set this one up just like we did with our main profile by selecting the destination drive, the schedule, the included files, and all the other settings. To switch back to the main profile, simply click the drop down menu. And if you ever decide you want to delete a profile, then you can simply select that profile from the drop down menu and then push the remove button here. And that's all there is to it. Now you can rest easy knowing that all your data is safe. Well, that wraps up today's video. If you have any thoughts or questions, then feel free to drop a comment and let me know if you're using one of these applications or if you decided to go with one of the alternatives instead. Like I said, there's plenty of good options out there, so I'm curious to hear what everyone else is using. Also, if you found this video to be helpful, then be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.